Bronx is basically the innovation incubator for, um, for all the city of Boston. Essentially, we are designed to um, uh, essentially uh, sort of implement uh, innovative approaches to del delivery of city services that bring city government and city residents closer together. And we're essentially set up in a way uh, with sort of a, a very light uh, structure uh, to overcome what are kind of traditional barriers to innovation uh, in government. So, Traditionally, you know, government has a hard time connecting with all of the innovators um, outside of City Hall or that front door for any innovator who wants to come in and try something new. Uh, for folks who need money to run stuff, we would do small seed capital grants. And uh, if you're somebody inside City Hall, we provide a way to manage your project. So our strategy for uh, delivering innovation really you know, it was inspired from a few different places, but uh, one of the sources uh, of inspiration is the mayor. Mayor Mino has a his philosophy of uh, executive leadership of uh, mayoral leadership is to to focus all of our time, attention, and resources on the public and, and to adding value to people's lives. So, at the you know every day, he tasks everyone around him to think in terms of how are you doing. Like, well, how is what you are doing right now helping somebody um, in, in, uh, in Roxbury? And more specifically, he's, he'll say things like, you know, I met a lady this morning. Her name is, you know, Josephine at a, at a coffee shop, and she said she had these three problems. How, are, how is what you are doing, chief of whatever department you are, helping them, Josephine? And so it's a very specific connection between people and how we connect with them. So when we were looking at the sources of you know, developing a model of innovation that would be sustainable, it made a lot more sense to tap the broader resources of the city as opposed to take an insular view and to say, how do we improve the management structure of, of government? And I mean, as, as we're fond of saying, we've been doing that for the past 30 plus years, and we've absolutely reached the, the point of diminishing returns, right? We're, you know, we're as efficient as, arguably as efficient as we've ever been, and people still, you know, are unhappy with their government. So the challenge for us is really to, to take a different perspective and to, to think in a different way about, you know, what we think innovation is and what the sources of innovation are, and so on. I was looking uh, this morning at uh, some of our usage statistics for one of uh, the projects we worked on, a project called Citizens Connect. Citizens Connect is essentially a, uh, a way in which a resident can simply report problems that are going on in their neighborhoods, whether it's a street light out or a pothole or graffiti. So 29,000 reports have been created since this project was launched in October of 2009. 29,000 potholes have been fixed or street lights have been fixed or graffiti has been removed, basically all making our neighborhoods better. We've gotten a lot of feedback from residents basically saying, they perhaps never would have called the hotline, never would have logged something on our website, but because they have a tool on their smartphone, because they have Citizens Connect, they actually are making the neighborhoods better. I would say, when we look at the way that the different um, players in the civic innovation ecosystem have, have operated, I think that there's been a tendency to focus on the low-hanging fruit, Mm -hmm. And for very good reason, because it's easy to do, you can target it, you can show some value. But what's happened is, I think, we're kind of stuck there, right? We're stuck with, with fairly pothole apps mm -hmm. and with transit apps. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we really need to be doing, and, and I think one of the ways that we try to distinguish ourselves, is to take on the tough challenges of cities, the core issues, education, public safety, economic development, all those kinds of you know, nuts and bolts issues that you know, really make cities the the engine of innovation in our society. So, of course, you know those don't lend themselves necessarily to an, an app. You know, you can't. It's hard to imagine an app that will like fix it, the education system app, right? But our sense is that technology does provide a, a platform or a leverage point to explore a number of different elements in these sort of larger, complex problems. And so, we don't think about any one app that we develop as as you know the next great thing. I mean, each, each one of our products, our, our projects are valuable, but they only you know, have a real impact once they're part of a larger pipeline of, of uh, projects that are exploring a whole space. 
So we have like three broad areas that we do work in. Um, the first, clicks and bricks, is looking at sort of the, the intersection of digital technology and place and location for locative media. Um, then there's a focus on 21st century education or 21st century learner, you know, trying to take a look at how um, new technologies can be used to, tr to create different opportunities for learning or to highlight old opportunities and so on. And then the last is participatory urbanism, but you know, really looking at sort of how the uh, um, sort of peer-to-peer -peer approach to, to living in cities, kind of a grassroots approach. So um, within that, I think that there's, there's, there's a lot of room to focus on these core issues. The core issues of you know, getting people and communities engaged in the life of the community and sort of rebuilding the trust relationships that in some cases have you know, begun to erode because of you know, sort of any number of reasons over the last 50 years. biggest thing that any entrepreneur inside of City Hall, outside of City Hall, student in a classroom, professor at a university can do is, is to try. I think that we, what we exist uh, to do is to support anyone who wants to pilot something new in the city. Um, we have been uh, thinking a lot about um, sort of this quote by Jane Jacobs that said, the city will work for everyone when it is built by everyone. And I think in order for it to be built by everyone, we actually need people who are fundamentally trying to do something new in their neighborhood or new in a community meeting or new uh, in, a, in a school or citywide. And so what we do is we are um, working with any entrepreneur who comes to us, any person inside this building, outside this building, or uh, you know, classes of students who want to do something new and actually solve some of these bigger challenges. Whether it is filling a pothole or changing policy, we, we are there to sort of help and support that. And it's worth saying that we, we take a, a very broad view of the term entrepreneur, so we don't only think in terms of Mark Zuckerberg or, or, uh, or Steve Jobs or somebody. Um, we really think in terms of people that are looking deeply at issues within their community, trying to develop solutions, and then trying to, to, to actually roll those, those solutions out. So we, so for example, I think there's been a lot of focus on just getting people to give ideas on different topics. And our sense is that doesn't get you any closer to anything, right? I mean, there's no doubt that sort of differences of different issues. Um, in this city, there is absolutely no lack of, of opportunities to make your voice heard. And I would say that the, the, the public of Boston, the residents of Boston, make their desires known. Certainly, which isn't to say that there aren't people sort of that are underserved, that, that is certainly true. But I think our problem is, you know, in aggregate, not that of um, putting a platform out there, letting people, you know, say whatever their, their issue is in, in, in a sort of an unstructured way. And that we really need to move beyond that metaphor, generally for people that are thinking in this space, to, we, we talk a lot about a new kind of citizenship, right, where people are looking at, you know, citizenship that is not based on, you know, whether you know, your your legal status or your immigration status, but really whether or not you are you are taking a a, a, a problem solving approach to your community. You know, you're looking at the education problems, looking at the um, you know public safety problems, and really trying to say how can I impact that? How can I develop a solution? And we want to enable those people to actually do those things. And so we think you know at different levels of scale. So we certainly work with. You know, uh, more conventional, you know, for-profit entrepreneurs, people that have companies that have delivered things. But there's also, you know, one or two individuals or, or students or or retired people, people that are trying to solve problems in their community and trying to help them. So we think of of broadening the the context of the term entrepreneur, civic entrepreneur. That's really, in some ways, broadening the context of what it means to be a volunteer. I mean, this is not a radical new concept, right? People who have uh, forever taking care of a park near them, taking care of a senior next door, volunteering in the school or whatever it might be, those are folks who are shaping their block or shaping the entire city of Boston. We're talking about the same thing, but perhaps giving folks new tools to be able to, to shape their community around them.